The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. Now, let us look more broadly and ask the main question, how should Georgia lead the way in a world full of current unimaginable challenges? Here's what some prominent IFIs have to say on the issue. It's indeed a very tricky question. Uh, I think I, we all wish we had a crystal ball. Um, there are a few things Georgia can do which is quite uh, ready at hand, and one is, of course, to enhance the energy security. Uh, this is an obvious area for both domestic and foreign direct investment to Georgia, a huge potential, and we should just get on with it. Um, another thing is the supply chains, where Georgia has uh, part, it's part of the logistics chain that Sebastian was talking about, I would very much agree. But also there are opportunities with companies that uh, want to change the location of production. We also see a number of Georgian companies who want to increase their production of whatever they're doing to compensate for the, for the broken supply chains. And I think here Georgia can really step up and, and do more. And I think this is responsibility of all of us, the IFIs, the local banks, uh, the international banks, to support the entrepreneurs active in the Georgian market, regardless of their nationality, foreign or, or uh, Georgian. Uh, then I would like to also say that this is also an opportunity to further enhance access to finance and inclusion of very small scale entrepreneurs into the formal economy. Uh, we saw the digitalization take quite a huge leap during COVID and I think we can build on this and we can build on making sure that the small companies in the remote area, say in the tourism sector, actually get access to finance so they can then grow their business. Again, this is the responsibility of all of us and we all need to cooperate to, to make this happen. Uh, last but not least, I would actually use this opportunity to upskill the country a bit. Again, coming back to digitalization, which really took a leap during COVID, uh, we need to continue to make sure that uh, students get the opportun uh, opportunity to get an education that leads to good jobs. Interesting jobs, jobs where they do want to work, so you don't absolutely need to migrate to a big city or abroad. So this is again something that uh, we can it's, it's difficult, but since we are facing a very difficult situation anyway, let's just take on yet another challenging um, uh, topic. Yeah, we did have the opportunity today to present to uh, the government, also to, to the NBG, um, our country economic memorandum, which is essentially our um, view of the economy as it is today, but also looking at opportunities uh, moving forward. And um, I want to perhaps start where, where uh, Yukova ended, which is on, on the resilience, on this positive note on resilience. And, and I think this is the first um, you know, aspect that I really want to laud uh, the, the, the government and also the NBG for, is, is the way that they have now managed multiple crises. Um, I don't know that many countries really have fared that well. Um, you know, there's been the, you know, the oil shock, uh, there has been the COVID crisis, now the war in Ukraine. Um, you know, you've had neighbors at war as well with one another. And really, I think very sound macro uh, sort of fiscal policies, you know, building up reserves, um, you know, quick, decisive uh, decision making at certain points in the crisis, I think really helped Georgia weather a lot of these storms and come out of these uh, multiple crises in relatively uh, good shape. And in fact, if you take a step back and again, look at the big picture, I mean, Georgia has averaged Five, over 5% 5 growth over a 10-year period. Yes, it has been hit hard during the COVID crisis. Yes, we saw an, an extraordinary drop in, in GDP, which, by the way, you saw across the region, but particularly Georgia was hard hit, given that it's a you know, small open market economy dependent on tourism. But we saw the recovery equally strong. And now in the first quarters, I mean, the results are, are truly impressive, which again shows us just how resilient uh, Georgia has. And this is government, but it's also the private sector, financial sector, and, and really the, the, the people of Georgia that have really done, and I must say, an extraordinary job in, in managing uh, through these uh, multiple crises. Um, with that said, um, and as you rightly point out, there is, I think now comes the challenging time, the difficult road, because Georgia came over the last 10 years from a relatively low base and started on some of these reforms quite late, and now comes this tricky part where you're, Georgia is an upper middle income country. Now in order to take and what we refer to to overcome and to leave this middle income trap, to become a rich country, an OECD country, and, and, uh, a high income country as we say, this is the challenging part now. And this is where Georgia now needs to really double down on some of the reforms. I think first and foremost, when we discussed this today, um, human capital. Important aspects and investments are needed to improve both better health and in particular education outcomes. 
Um, number two, productivity, in particular at the firm, but also sector level. I think important investments need to be made to ensure that firms are more productive, that they grow, and that they create better paying jobs. Right now, unemployment is at a very high rate, and if you unpeel and unpack it, even the employment numbers are relatively, I wouldn't say weak, but you see a lot of uh, jobs more at the low, sort of uh, low page, low income uh, sector. And I think that it's important that we create better and better and higher paying jobs um, in the economy. And again, that's going to require firms to grow, in particular in the service sector, and that's going to require in turn better skilled and better um, educated labor as well to be able to meet that. Third, I think um, connectivity is going to play an important role, a critical role. There's a big opportunity now in the middle corridor connecting China and Europe uh, through the South Caucasus, in particular with the Russia uh, sanctions regime in place right now, that I think Georgia can benefit from, but important investments need to be made, both in infrastructure, but almost even more importantly on the soft side, trade, logistics. I think uh, important uh, uh, improvements need to be made. Um, and then um, I think, uh, I, I think I'll leave it at that for now. There are other challenges, yeah. but those are three main ones. Just if you may, one word of caution. I think many people are saying that the COVID crisis is over. I fear what's going to happen uh, come autumn, when the next wave comes. I know that right now, and it's a truly a pleasure to see everyone without a mask, um, you know, the economy roaring back to life, but I am quite fearful of the fact that only 35 to 40% of the population, and the number is much higher um, in, among the elderly population, what will happen in fall when a new variant, uh, God forbid, you know, occurs. And I think more needs to be done uh, to, to, uh, to really double down and in particular get the elderly vaccinated. And then um, finally, the impacts of the war in Ukraine, the economic impacts, again, the short-term shock, I think, has been withstood, as I just mentioned. But I do fear that there are longer-term impacts. You had a very nice slide um, showing all the you know, potential you know, reduction in growth in some of the bigger economies that Georgia uh, trades with. And I think uh, that's going to be, bring some uh, dark clouds in the world. Recently, we also, together with colleagues from other institutions, conducted a study recovery uh, in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. And one of the first conclusions is that across the region, the GDP declined by approximately 4% in 2020, but then the policy support was unprecedented and amount to around 6% of GDP. So thanks to it, the recovery process, of course, there were many problems, the losses were contained and the private sector balance, sheet, balance sheets were protected. And now the question is, in the wake of the next crisis, how resilient this economies can be? What is there? Um, in 2021, we had also unprecedented volume of loans we gave all over the world in 160 countries we work in. It was over 90 billion euro and the structure of the portfolio, where also support to SMEs was at unprecedented level of almost half, 45 billion euro, proved to us that tackling the pandemic, investing in climate change, and uh, financing recovery goals are mutual, mutually inclusive goals, so it goes all together. Now coming more specifically to the question after this introduction, yeah? So of course, we have tragic loss of life in Ukraine uh, caused by uh, Russian aggression. We have uh, a crisis in, in, in Europe related to, to the war caused by Russia. And here in this region, we have kind of major shift. Economic, geopolitical happening in front of us. Yes, so it's a big question mark where it will lead. And then what we found in this study we did together with, uh, with our colleagues from other institutions is that what is important is also structural conditions for the business to grow. And here I wanted to mention a few points. Uh, my first point is that for Georgia, uh, there are some tools on the table that the country can tackle. First of all, is association with the EU and different comprehensive free trade area. So if we talk about new trade routes, new connectivity, connectivity to new markets, not connectivity in the sense of infrastructure, 
there is already regulation that requires further implementation, but it improves the position for shifting the trade somewhere else. Uh, then uh, my second point is, of course, um, related to the support from the development community and economic and investment plan, where the challenge of the European Union, where the challenges that are related, for example, to middle corridor development or to economic inclusion of enterprises in the country, for example, in rural areas, are already included. So this is also the part of support that can be tackled and be used. So uh, one of the major points uh, proved by the pandemic is the inclusion into digital sphere, both for citizens and for the enterprises. So then the investment process of the government, which is already started and we are doing together with the World Bank project under, uh, under that economic and investment plan in the Western Georgia, is related to digital infrastructure in rural areas. Then uh, the third thing is all the structural reforms for the business to grow. And then last but not least, I want to mention something specifically related to banking sector, because this was quite surprising in the study we conducted that we discovered that there is quite a number of enterprises, especially young enterprises or SMEs in the region. So I'm sorry, I do not have the granular data for Georgia that are financially autarkic and voluntarily so. So they do not want or do not need or do not feel that it's profitable for them to engage with the banking sector to invest. But on the other hand, they deprive themselves of the certain growth path that can be, uh, that can be provided by such financial inclusion. And I think this is a challenge uh, for, for all of us and also for the banking sector to bring these enterprises to the financial system. The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most.